Sometimes it really pays to think outside the box in choosing the right tool for the job. Take my front lawn, for instance. It might take an hour or so to get that whole thing nicely mowed with my minimal carbon footprint manual push mower. And you know, if I had my kid doing the work, that'd be just fine. Because after all, what's time to a kid, right? But you know what? If I had one of those combine harvester contraptions, I have calculated that I could mow my entire lawn in 6.3 seconds. It's something to think about. Particularly if my lawn was really a metaphor for my DFT problem in my next chip design. Oh, and if because of Moore's Law, my lawn now occupied about half the state of Oregon. Bring on the combine harvester. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. If DFT is becoming a bottleneck for your design team, you might want to think outside the box on what tools you use. It turns out that an emulator could be the combine harvester for your DFT issues. My guest today is Jean-Marie Brunet from Mentor Graphics, and we're going to chat about using emulation for DFT. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about the Veloce emulation platform. Hi, Jean-Marie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Amelia. Thanks for having me. All right. Test bring up is normally one of the scariest parts of my projects. And when we try it for the first time, oh man, looky there, always a problem. Absolutely. Very interesting topic, actually. We have seen a lot of customers asking particularly that question around initial test bring up. They have experienced situations that at the beginning were, for us, very surprising. Something like, well, my scan chain is not working, which yeah. seems to be really weird. Or uh, even if the scan chain is working, actually the vector doesn't go through. Mm -hmm. So those are really basic things that should be working. And of course, there is additional issues beyond just the scan chain integrity or the vectors going through. But we have seen some situations where in a design flow perspective, you have some situation before tape out. I mean, tape out is always a very crazy time. All the CPU are utilized 100%. Everybody's fighting for CPU. Right. And most of the time, the two teams that are winning are the functional verification team and the backend team. Mm -hmm. The people running Caliber before tape out and then people running, uh, you know, Simulator or Veloce before tape out. And in parallel, you have the DFT team. They have done their task, which is doing DFT insertion in the netlist. Yeah. You know, it's either ATPG scan or LogicB or memory based. Now you have a gate level netlist, needs to be verified, needs to be implemented to be ready for tape out. And in parallel, you need to verify that the vectors, the test vectors are working. This team, unfortunately, is always fighting to have CPU because mm -hmm. it's tape out time. So they usually not win this fight and they carry on to run those vectors way after tape out. And the fact of the matter with this is that you don't fully verify that the vectors are correct with that particular gate level netlist. Mm. That's what happens if there is an initial test bring up problem of basic scan chain integrity, basic vector scanning in, scanning out, not being correct. Then you find that very late in the cycle, after mask, after silicon, after test being done, it costs a lot of money and it's extremely difficult to debug at that stage. Right. So that's a huge risk. That's what we call manufacturing ramp up risk. Okay. So from the title, I know we're going to be talking about emulation and DFT, but Jean-Marie, I haven't really heard about using emulation for DFT. Absolutely. This is quite new. It took some uh, convincing to do because you have to have actually two teams talking to each other. You need to have the DFT engineers and the emulator team. And usually it's not logical for a DFT engineers to talk to uh, the person managing the capacity of uh, an emulator within the customer to say, I need cycle on the emulator. I'm right. a DFT engineer, I need cycle. Well, what we have done is creating a, a very easy to use application called Veloce DFT, which is designed for test. And the value proposition is to reduce the cycle of simulation of that DFT verification on the emulator. That concept is quite new. And those two teams now are talking with each other. And the reason why they're talking to each other is because we are reducing significantly the risk by enabling the DFT verification to be done before tape out. Okay, so let's dive down into some details about how this works. So detail is always very important. This view here is really explaining the overall flow, the overall DFT validation flow. Okay. So you, you usually have three steps. The first one is 
where all the EDA DFT tools are utilized. So that's step number one, where you get a gate level netlist and you need to do insertion in that netlist. So usually it's scan or it is uh, logic based or memory based. So you are inserting a specific dedicated logic that are targeted to be used on the test. Okay. And you do that with inserting scan, you have compression, decompression logic, and you create test pattern that are basically utilized to verify that the logic is correct on the chip. Okay. And those test patterns are usually uh, after that used by the tester. So since we're talking about tester time, it's about money. Right. And you don't want to have a bazillion of uh, test patterns because then you'll have a significant cost on the tester. So it's all about having the right test patterns and the right logic inserted. From a format perspective, most of the customer use an STIL file, okay. which is just a semantic of a, uh, or name of a file and a, and a format. And when they're done with that, you reach a stage which is, okay, my netlist, my DFT gate level netlist is ready. And that's that netlist that is actually verified and place and routed and going to the back end flow. And that's the netlist you actually tip out with. Mm -hmm. So you would like that netlist to be correct. Yes. Because that's really that one that is close to silicon. Mm -hmm. You enter that stage of simulation. So you're verifying that gate level netlist. It takes forever. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is actually from a um, design perspective, uh, not that complicated, but from a density and size perspective, very, very big. It's a full SOC. When you're on scan, you're scanning in all the input and the output, and you're having vectors going through the design. So it is large. It is really big, which is why it takes forever to run. And you verify the, the correctness of the pattern. So you have a pattern in after a couple of cycles due to the latency in the design. You have your pattern out, and you verify if that sequence is correct, and so on. That simulation process is very long. And as I mentioned before, it's usually at the time where you are fighting for CPU resources. So what we have done with Veloce is now you don't fight for CPU resources, you move that task to an emulator. Oh, okay. So now you're going to be fighting for an emulator capacity, but we can help them with that by providing more capacity. <laughs> but then it's a really a different flow. You move that DFT environment completely on the emulator and you run much, much faster. And now you're done with step number two. Step number three now, it's after the silicon is back, everything is on the tester and you run those test patterns. Now that you have verified very quickly that they function, then you bring up is less risky. It's more what we say qualified. So that's the overall flow sequence. Right. Okay, so again, one of my problems is normally that it takes so long to simulate. Absolutely. And that's the main reason why we have C customer having that need. The MBIST run through the test port and the scan takes a absolutely a very, very long time. And again, it is really from a timing perspective, it is done during tape out. So everybody is fighting for CPU resources. The designs now are more and more complex. Mm -hmm. You have more and more logic which means you have more and more logic that needs to be tested. Right. Through this ATPG process, basically, you need to verify that the data shifting in and shifting out is correct. And again, this is within the context of a complete chip. So right. the challenge here is not really a technical challenge. This mm -hmm. is more a performance, how quickly I can get to the result. Mm. That's the number one fundamental challenge they have. There's another flavor of that challenge, which is, okay, now I can actually run this faster. Do I have the right test vectors. And right. this is probably a step that we will talk uh, moving forward in another talk. All right. So I think I understand why I might want to use an emulator for DFT. Tell me why I'd want to use Veloce. It's a good question because probably it's the best emulator platform on the market. But uh, I will be, uh, of course, uh, the first one to say that. <laughs> I think the main reason, actually two main reasons, you can say two, two and a half. The first one is we're talking about full chip SOC. Mm. Right. So it's about capacity, which is related as well to performance in mm -hmm. a way. But capacity is number one. You cannot have something that is 250 million gates type of situation. If you're talking about a networking chip or a full CPU or GPU, and you need to run full SOC scan mode on and all the vectors, now you're talking about something fairly big. Right. So capacity is why we shine with Veloce. Second is performance. You get to run uh, faster than simulation, and mm -hmm. that's the basically number one value proposition of an emulator. Yeah. And we do very well with that. And the third one is where we do much better than everybody else is visibility. It's very similar to power from that sense. You don't want to spend cycle to verify DFT here. 
and saying, oh, because of uh, limitation of visibility, I, I don't want to verify 20% of the nets. Mm. It doesn't work like this. When the design full SOC is scan mode on, everything is scan mode on. So you get to verify and have access to pretty much all the nets that you care about. So you require 100% visibility. So for example, if your emulation platform is using uh, FPGA, you're not going to have 100% visibility. That's not architecture that we have. We do our own chip and we don't sacrifice visibility. All right. So what else could I use emulation for? So we have recently announced a expansion of our Veloce application called Veloce Apps. Okay. And we see really a change in the industry of emulation where the discussion is really different than five to 10 years ago. Five to 10 years ago, it was 100% of content of discussion was about the hardware. Mm -hmm. How fast can you go? What's the capacity that you have? And so on and so forth. Right. What we see now is a move towards a different usage. The emulation platform becomes a verification hub, per se. Mm. And the hub has at the foundation of the bottom uh, foundation a capacity. So you need a hardware capacity and you purchase that hardware capacity based on your capacity need. Then in the center, you have an operating system. That operating system is really the very smart brain out of the overall platform. Mm -hmm. It allows you to plug application on the top, schedule those applications effectively on the capacity of the hardware. That's extremely important to have a very good operating system. We had launched OS3 operating system in April 2014, and we have constantly uh, evolved and improved that operating system. But this is an architectural decision we made a couple of years ago. And on the top, you plug applications. So you see some applications that are very, I will say, emulation-centric, emulation well-known. So you have, you know, coverage, assertion. You have software debug, which is when you talk about shift left, you need to do hardware, software co-verification. You have ICE, which is in circuit emulation or virtual solutions, mm -hmm. where we, we have shine very much with the networking market. And you have new applications, which are new use models. DFT, as we just talked about. And you asked the question, this is not logical to think about DFT and Veloce or DFT and an emulator in the same sentence. And I think we have demonstrated that now we are going towards new use model like DFT. Power was a very good example, very visible last year and still continue to be very visible. Reason why power was like this, so important for customers because most of the market moved to a FinFET. With FinFET, dynamic power consumption is extremely important to control. Most of those new applications that we see, they, they are really targeted towards de-risking specific tasks for our customer. Oh, so okay. Power, for example, Veloce Power was really launched to de-risk this situation with power consumption being out of control. Hmm. And an emulator allowed a chip to be verified within the context of a live application. So you want to verify a chip pretty much how it's going to be utilized. Right. Not from a functional test bench that was created to verify only the functionality. And, and now the chips are becoming so big that you can wonder if a functional test bench is actually the right thing to do. So Powers was utilizing that very well. We were able to look at activity, switching activity within the design of real context of live application after you boot an operating system and so on. DFT is very much the same concept here. You, you want to actually accelerate the verification on how the chip will be bring up. And you can even consider that Power and DFT could be two application or use model that very much related. And mm. uh, I'll explain why. The first thing that you do uh, on initial test bring up, as I mentioned, is you do bring up. So you do scan mode. Yeah. Well, if you have not verified that the power consumption of the chip on scan mode is acceptable mm -hmm. within your spec, then you have a big problem. Yes. You might burn the board. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where those applications are first very good by themselves to tackle a very specific risk for a customer and are related. So mm -hmm. now that you have an entire environment of a chip, full SOC, being able to verify on scan mode, you can also look at the activity with full visibility Again, not every emulator can do that. But with full visibility of how much actually the chip is burning from a power perspective on scan mode. And you could not do that in the past. All right. So what kind of results are we looking at here? Do you have any real data to throw my way? Absolutely. I, I know you were going to ask to <laughs> to look at some real data. We have worked on that for um, several months and QA internally, uh, the DFT application, using test cases that are actually customer test cases that we cannot name, 
but they are used regularly in our, our QA procedures. And the flavor of DFT methodologies that we are covering here with those test cases is from ATPG scan to memory based to logic based. We're pretty much covering all the methodology, uh, DFT methodologies. The number of cycles varies from, you know, a couple of hundred thousands to uh, billions of cycles. Okay. The size as well, the design size varies from, you know, one EVB to a couple of EVB. So there's, there's still relatively small test cases internally. So we wanted to run them quickly and verify. Uh -huh. And we are comparing simulation run time, which is really the traditional way of verifying uh, DFT vectors, sure. to the runtime on Veloce with DFT application. The improvement in the acceleration uh, factor on the, you know, thousands, ten thousands type of range, it varies from, you know, design to design, but we have seen tremendous improvement. We were actually quite surprised to see such an improvement. Traditionally, customers look at getting a purchase of an emulator because they go in faster than simulation, and usually it's about 10x, 20x. Now we're talking about a significant improvement here versus simulation runtime. It varies from design to design. You sure. know, the largest OC chip that we just looked at with Veloce DFT was on the order of a couple of hundred X. And 100x is already uh, tremendous from a customer perspective. Sure. They actually now consider something that used to be impossible to do before tape out to now be possible to finish before tape out. That's the overall value proposition of Veloce DFT. Very cool. All right, Jean Marie, can you wrap up your main points for me? Sure, I'll be very happy to do that. As we have discussed, most of the Veloce applications and apps that we are announcing, they're targeted for a very specific uh, de risking task for mm -hmm. our customers. Veloce DFT is all about de-risking yield manufacturing bring-up. The test bring-up is unqualified most of the time and therefore risky. Now we are de-risking this. We're not de-risking everything. Mm -hmm. okay? It's not eliminating the risk. Mm -hmm. It's reducing the risk. And a lot of customers are seeing this as a very positive move. We see that an emulator is a right platform for de-risking uh, DFT because of capacity, because of uh, visibility, 100% visibility, and our very good ability to handle gate level. Everything with DFT is gate level netlist. The traditional use model for an emulator is, is RTL, but here, here it is gate level. And we have the right format and standard to support pretty much all the flows with DFT. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for your time. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out even more information about Mentor Graphics's Veloce emulation platform. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out our on-demand section of eejournal.com or our YouTube channel, keyword eejournal. <laughs>